Weird Science is the revolution. The Amazing Spider-Man, number 45, written by Zeb Wells. Guest art by Carmen Canero. Colors by Marcel Menez. Letters by VCs Joe Caramagna. We're coming out of that classic. I love the idea at one point where Norman's like, sorry, I couldn't help you out on that crazy gag war. Yeah, where were you, dude? Yeah, where were you? And we we asked that while that was going on. And really what this whole issue is where we didn't know what it was. What was this going to be? You almost expect it to be kind of an epilogue for gang work. Maybe spell out some things. Maybe show in this, though. You're basically like, oh, crap, we got to catch up to the continuity maybe that we lost out on during gang war. And when they in any of this, including the intro and when people talk, anytime they mention gang war or anything about it, it makes me laugh because they're trying to make us think that it <laughs> that it meant something and then doesn't even mention Tombstone. It's all like, oh, man, you know, that Madam Mask fueled gang war. I'm like, no. No, I, I don't yeah. know what you mean. And they're like, oh, the, the city's coming back pretty nicely after the gang war. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man, people were really affected. Were they? <laughs> that was one of the biggest problems of that whole event was the idea that you really didn't see and didn't seem like in some things that people even cared. They were just going about their day and like, oh, by the way, gang wars happened. And, oh, thank God I'm not in Central Park. Yeah, in Central Park where there's thousands of people at any moment Yeah, in time. exactly. It's just that people didn't get to walk their dogs for a week. I, it, it's just, it, it's a goof. And the way that Sub Wells writes, it just, he tries, and in this issue, he's doing it again. He tries to make things appear like they were big instead of when he's writing them, make them big. And that's what it is. And so what you do, though, after a gang war, is, oh, yeah, remember Anna Watson, the Anne of Mary Jane, who ended up taking medicine in the X-Men books? And it was the Craig Cohen medicine that Orcus kind of finagled. She ends up going a little crazy. Now she's in Ravencroft for some reason. And you end up having Peter because he had made the antidote. He's going to break into Ravencroft and he's going to try to get Anna out because he promised Mary Jane. It's such a convoluted way to do something that I don't know that anybody cared. I didn't it's care about it It's something that if you would have had the first page of this where Mary Jane says, oh, my God, thanks, Peter. Thank you for giving the antidote to my aunt. She still has dementia, but, hey, she's not criminally insane anymore. And he's like, no problem. Now get rid of that, Paul, because nobody likes her. I think the only people that we care about, Anna Watson, with uh, this is uh, Jason and Ruben on the X-Men podcast. My big point is <laughs> this is more of an X-Men thing. It's not a – yeah, it's Anna. And people are reading all the books. Maybe they care, but this doesn't need to take pretty much a whole issue of Amazing Spider-Man. That really is boring. It is Peter as Spider-Man. Breaking into Ravencroft, where he's just crawling along the ceiling next to lights. Nobody sees him. There's Hippo. There's Mr. Hyde. I mean, everything is kind of a joke until then we get to Anna, who is just like cursing it up, yelling and screaming. She's in a straight jacket. She should not be with Mr. Hyde or like she is nowhere on the same level as those guys. Nowhere. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised. They're like, oh. That you're only here on Ravencroft for a second. We're going to send you to the raft. Like, just keep going up the <laughs> ladder of the nonsense. I mean, it's it's an old lady who took a medicine that Orcus ended up messing up, and now she's in Ravencroft? She innocently took a me medicine for her dementia. A lot of things that you have to kind of figure out. Why would they do this? And I guess it might be easier because it's not so much a maximum security deal in this. We'll see when Peter shows up later as just Peter with Mary Jane. They're just letting anybody in, just walking around. But you end up where Peter, Spider-Man, is able to get into the cell of Anna. Spider-Man ends up just jabbing Anna suddenly. Oh, my God, it's me. I I'm sorry. I don't want to kill anybody. Thank you for saving me, but I actually, I feel bad. I just want to stay here. Yeah, because then Peter says, Smile I'm going to get you out. We're going we're gonna to break out. Zeb Welch tries to play the idea like he's thought of everything. We're going to break out, which is complete. Like, you can't just, even if she shouldn't be there, you can't just take her out. Oh, I have a guy who has some high-priced lawyers. We'll figure it out later because he's talking about Norman. I'll point something out that now I realize is complete bullcrap. But he ends up saying, 
we'll get you out. And she's like, no, no, no. I, I hurt some people. I should stay. I'm like, what? There's a lot of things in this issue that you, you look like you're doing something to not do it. And then you start thinking, why did we do this anyway? Like, yeah, she's better now. She still has dementia, we think. I mean, it seems, right? So, But why go through all this? We're, we're halfway done the issue. You got to a dead end to say, oh, we're not going to do what we were going to do. To then go and do more of that, right? Here's what I think is complete bullcrap. And you tell me if I'm wrong. All right. Peter goes into Ravencroft to heal or cure, if you will, Anna Watson and says, I'm going to break you out. And my boss has high priced lawyers. Okay. She says, no. Immediately then he goes to Norman and quits. I, I, what would he have done then? It, it almost feels to me <laughs> like once she says, I don't need those lawyers, he's like, you know what? I really don't want to work for Norman yeah, anyway. I don't like, like him anymore. Like that would have kept him on the payroll. But now that he doesn't need that, screw it. I'm leaving. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't make sense, right? So no, he goes no. to talk to Norman. And remember, the reason, one of the reasons also why Miss Marvel started working in Oscorp, Peter wanted to keep an eye on Norman. Norman is on the up and up. He's going the straight and narrow. But Peter was afraid. And Norman wanted him around and said, if I start acting weird like the goblin again, I need you here. To watch me at this point we know that norman has the sins the goblins they're back we saw that and we saw them return we haven't seen anything since which that was again, a while ago seemed like why we didn't get him during the whole gang war where he then explains that i had to protect oscorp i'm like i didn't see anybody around oscorp dude actually we saw him at the docks and some other but that's we saw him yelling about rec rap too remember yeah remember and out. he even brings that up about rec rap so it was kind of lame not seeing him, but I get it. But I think that the reason why, because Peter says, I'm going to quit. I have to be Spider-Man. And that's where he's saying, like, man, I really stepped it up during that gang war. No, you didn't. You you got duped. You got duped and allowed Tombstone to have to take over. Like, you failed. But he says, I got to be Spider-Man more often. So Norman says, well, listen, just show up when you can. Just be Spider-Man. You don't even have to show up for work. You'll still get paid. So that gives you this side deal of we don't have to wonder where Peter's getting his money. Right? It's a lame yeah, way. I'm assuming he's we high paid, that. too. Yes. Oh, yeah. So he's getting tons of money. We don't have to worry about that. And you could just say, well, Norman. But then in the meantime, I think that Zeb Wells, because I think Norman's going to start being more and more Dublin. You can't have Peter around. Him. You can't because Peter was holding him in check kind of by watching him. I do think that Seb Wells is like, yeah, we can't have Peter poking around. We need him out of the pitch so that we can develop the deal. People want Norman to be back to the Green Goblin. I kind of, I don't know. I'm okay with him not because we got we got Doc Ock back. So it's like, it's just. It seems forced. And again, Peter goes to have this lunch meeting with Norman to tell him I quit. And then by the end. He's not quitting. So we now have two scenes where you go yep. to do something and don't do it. And I'm like, what? And then, you know, the idea of, oh, we're going to go and see Anna, me and Mary Jane. And so then we just go back to that. In the meantime, we get a really quick thing with Kurt Connors. They have the living brain. I'm like, all right. Because that's <laughs> just setting up things going forward. Okay, you're setting it up. All right, let's see what it is. But then we just go back to, okay, Peter. Is going to hang out with Mary Jane and they're yeah, going to go Mary see Mary Jane Anna. in quotation marks. Yeah, because yeah, then he's going through Central Park thinking, man, it looks really cool here since that gang war that we really <laughs> did a great job, that we got duped. And, that, and then he runs into Mary Jane. There's jackpot. Oh, God, minus one point. <sighs> and then this is why it's stupid, right? <laughs> yeah. He runs into Mary Jane. It's like, oh, hey, Mary Jane. Oh, wait, I'm jackpot. Well, we're working. Ooh, you know, I'm not used to this. What have you been up to? I saw an argument on my way over and thought I should break it up. What? Like, what does that mean? What did you do? Were they arguing about, like, which was a worse idea? Joe Garrison as Punisher or you as Jackpot? I, I'm serious. Or the hood as the Ghost Rider? Yes. Just saying, I saw an argument on my way over and thought I should break it up. It was me and you arguing about Philly cheesesteaks, and she broke <laughs> it up. It's so, And he goes... Oh, man, that's great. What, what do he you mean? does not like her being this uh, jackpot. Yeah, is it like all of a sudden, like this guy, I don't think Saquon Barkley should have left the Giants. The other guys, I love him on the Eagles. Like, is that the argument? Like, what is this? What <laughs> superhero is? Timely. 
I saw an argument on my way over and thought I should break it up. An argument. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that's what we get. She, I hope she hit jackpot on that one. They're just in the woods changing. It's the woods. It's still Central Park. You can't. There's yeah. people all over, man. See, Come I'm on. I'm saying. And they turn their back to each other. There's like, not only are people now getting nude photos of Mary Jane, but also knowing Peter's identity. And where are their clothes? <sighs> like, are they changing into something? During the, the, you didn't see the locker tree that they have <laughs> over there? Like, you didn't see that? Oh, no. I, I hope that they could get to Ravencroft without running into another argument. Just show it. I remember we we were uh, we didn't know whether or not she could actually fly or not, too. Like, how is she even getting around? I don't know. Not even that. They run into each other. It doesn't seem like this is where they were meeting. I, it's so ridiculous. So they yep. go off to Ravencroft. You made me laugh because I said, oh, wait a minute. They have World When He Died in the Avengers Incorporated book. And you're <laughs> like, nobody cares about that Al Ewing book. But again, in a book that seems like you're trying to get some continuity together, and catch up, you mess that up. Oh yeah, it's a mess up. Even even Doc Ock at the end, which we'll get to, feels off because of Spear Spider Man. But they're in Ravencroft. There's a bet. They even say, "Don't talk to Worldwind, who they're treating like Hannibal Lecter." Yeah, you shouldn't talk to him. He's bad. And the human fly, gross. And they're just letting Mary Jane and Peter just waltz around. And by the way, they got full new outfits on. Mary Jane's wearing boots. He's got a backpack. Where and- do they have these? Where's the backpack? <laughs> So ridiculous. It was in the tree locker. Uh, so then they go. They're in the Ravencroft, you know, general cafeteria Gen where Pop. somehow Sandman is just there. So random. Sandman's just there. And we're going to go through the back and forth. William, you know, William Baker. Oh, man, I'm glad that you called me that because people either call me Flint Marco or Sandman. Hey, why are you here? It, it could be this scene's not horrible. Just the idea that Peter is concerned. With William, and he's trying to suppress Sandman and Flint Marco. But when he hears, he's like, "Hey, again, why Peter even said, oh, a friend of a friend of a friend uh, knows you. Oh, who's that? Oh, uh, Spider Man. Like, why even do that? Just say, uh, you know, Joe, something. But he flips out. He becomes Sandman for a second, and then it dissipates, and nobody comes to him and says, "You got to get back in your cell." There's no way that it, because he has a suppressor on, but there's no way in hell that he would turn to the salmon even for three seconds and then not come and grab him. Yeah. Right. And they would come and grab him like, you got to get back in your cell. And like, oh, man. And then they kind of like laugh at Peter. Oh, man, we thought you'd mess things up. It's like uh, Peter's a visitor. And he's going over and harassing a, a freaking crazy person. He's trying he to turns be nice. into the Sandman because of what he's saying. It would be the idea where I'm in, like, I go and my wife is crazy. I go and I end up and I'm <laughs> talking to her and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I recognize Jeffrey Dahmer. And I go over and like, hey, Dahmer, what up? You eating people still? And he freaks out. Yeah, you're just, you're just agitating him. Right? Yeah. And, uh, so, but Peter's trying to be nice. But then you end up having William say, hey, listen, get word to your friend, Spider-Man. And I even this, it didn't really play off like I thought it would make sense to him. But he's like, wait, you saw how angry he got meeting Flint. He's still inside me. He wants out, wants to do bad things. You saw. Uh, but then Peter's like, you did the right thing. No, no guard or doctor coming over. The guy turned into Sam and says, he's not the only one I'm worried about. I need you to tell your friend, tell Spider-Man they want him out, too. And then you go back and see basically the, the sinister. But what? I figured it out without turning the page personally. But he'll know who I mean. And there you go. You see the sinister six there. There they are. Because that's the classic sinister six, right? There. Yeah, there they are. And and we'll see what it or all five. means and what's going on. Uh, I do like that. Doc Doc is always upset that he's a little tiny guy, so he's lifted himself off with his lift. That's a couple that are more his inches. Arms. It's cool, right? Yeah. I, I like that. But at the end, I. I just it's it's one of those issues that I understand you might have a cool down, you might have set up, which we do, but some of this just feels so random and just doesn't play out scene to scene as well as it should, though I still think this is way better than pretty much any issue that we've gotten in Gang War. So my my score isn't gonna be so bad. The art's okay. I actually like the art at points. Pretty good villain artist. Right? For sure. Yeah. 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 And Something so, different. Overall, it just ends up where instead of me being excited, because you said when we were talking about books, you said you were kind of excited to see what was going to come up after Gang War. And 
when I got this, I ended up, it's almost like, okay, Gang War stunk. What what are we going to get back to? And I'm like, oh, I'm just reminded that this is a Zebwell book. It's not that exciting. And you, you bring in other things like the Orcus stuff. I don't need that. You get jackpot, please. But overall, what would you give it? Historically, at least, I, I would always get excited when Sinister Six got together. I don't think I will be as much for this. Uh, it's just not going to be handled that well, I don't think. And that's that's a weird thing. You say that when I saw them, I didn't even think about it until he said that. Usually I would be excited. And, and usually what I'd say is, all oh, right, we're classic. For some reason, I groaned. I was like, oh, like, yeah, I, mean, I, it, I think uh, it is because I in, even without me even thinking it, I think that you're right, that it won't be handled well. I mean, it, it, he could also get to this in 20 issues, too. I mean, we don't know when it's going to come. That's true. Um, I would say uh, less points for having Jackpot in there. I do. <laughs> I did really like the uh, the cover. I think that's worth mentioning by John Romita Jr. I thought that was a really cool cover. Didn't have anything to do at all with the issue itself, but uh, I'd give this a seven. Yeah, I'm a six five. One of the things, too, that you have is Anna, uh, when she is cured, but she's staying in Ravencroft, says, oh, you know, about them being a couple and who ruined it. Now, at least that it does end up being the idea that even Anna's like, yep, Mary Jane ruined it. Like, I didn't mind that. I like that part. I'm shocked that Paul didn't show up just to annoy me. So actually, the the thing that you took off for Jackpot, I'm going <laughs> to give back because Paul isn't even mentioned by name. No, he's out. Weird science is the revolution.